Okay, so we've got everybody here. All right, I call this meeting to order. Today is uh, March the 25th, 2021. The time is 6.43. I call this meeting of the Ed Cartels Independent School District to order. Uh, can I get roll call, Mr. Uh, Mauser? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Vice President Rolando Lozano. Here. Board Secretary, uh, Board Trustee Juan J. Ibarra. Board Trustee Tony Barco. Board Trustee Fernando Torres Jr. Present. Board Trustee Robert Peacock Jr. Here. Uh, Board President Chris Morales. Here. Mr. President, we have a quorum. All right. <clears throat> Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Will you please lead us in the pledge, uh, Mr. Lozano? <clears throat> no, I didn't hear you. To the flag of the United States of America. Some America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. All right, Mr. Rocha, will you lead us in... Um, Invocation, Mr. President, if I may, uh, at the end of the invocation, can we have a moment of silence for Mr. Barco's brother in law who passed away yesterday? Yes, we sure can, <clears throat> Mr. Rocha. No, Ms. Rocha, we can't hear you, Ms. Rocha. So we have a moment of silence. All right. So we will have a moment of silence in uh, remembrance of uh, Mr. Barco's uh, brother-in-law. All right. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> All right, so due to the health and safety concerns related to COVID-19 coronavirus, this meeting will be conducted by video conference or telephone call. At least a quorum of board members will be present by video conference call in accordance with the provisions of section 551.125 or 551.127 of the Texas government code that have not been suspended by order of governor. The subjects to be discussed or considered or upon which any formal action may be taken are listed below. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and jump to item number three, open forum. Do we have any comments from the public? No comments, Mr. President. All right, thank you. Mr. Torres, uh, <clears throat> we jump to uh, item number four. We have uh, recognitions. I believe we have uh, item A, mentor program. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Today, we uh, want to recognize the mentor program led by Mr. Hassel at, at Cachosa High School, and he will be giving a short presentation and recognizing his students. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you so much, Board of Trustees. Uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing our students to be here today to be recognized for their participation in the world recognized program, which is a mentor program, which uh, I'm here to talk about. Uh, this fall semester, uh, some of our students uh, from Medcal Chelsea applied uh, to be part of uh, a, a pilot program that was supposed to take place during the summer. 
Uh, this program was uh, coming out of Columbia University, which of course Columbia is considered uh, one of the top five schools in the world, considered is one of the Ivy Leagues and right in the heart of uh, Manhattan. And uh, the mentor program was to invite students from all over the world to participate in the leadership summit. Uh, the leader of the mentor program is Dr. Hitendra Wadwa. Uh, many of you, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of him, but Dr. Wadwa is one of the TED talkers. He does a lot of TED talk presentations. And uh, one of the things that he does is he teaches students who are already leaders, how to question their leadership, how to become more effective leaders. And by doing so, putting them together with other leaders from across the country, from across the world. Uh, this was supposed to take place during the summer. However, uh, due to the fact that, uh, oh, and by the way, Dr. Wadwa is a, is a professor at the Columbia University uh, School of Business. And he's also a mentor, not a mentor, but really he is an advisor to several Fortune 500 companies such as HEB and so forth in terms of their business models and how they approach uh, customer service. So with that in mind, uh, I received a call uh, from, uh, from Dr. Daniel King telling me, hey, look, uh, you know, there's an opportunity here. Let's, let's see if we can get some kids to apply. So we got our kids to apply and uh, I spoke with Dr. Uh, Petra Nemeth from uh, the Mentora Institute who, who was working out of New York City. And uh, here's where the story becomes great. Uh, she said, look, send me some applications. It's a really hard program to get into. She calls me a couple of days later and says, oh my God, you have some the most amazing students that I've ever seen on paper. What they do is just awesome. The way they're described, the recommendations, I am just beyond impressed. Now, the kids also had to go through an interview process. So this isn't just like I'm recommending the kids. I mean, the kids had to go through an intense scrutiny in order to be part uh, participants in the program. Uh, when we were done, I got another call back from the Institute and said, we're just going to take all your students because they're amazing. I mean, that's just how great uh, students at Ecuador also are. And so um, I'm very proud to say that our students participated in a six week leadership program. So they did this on their own time. Uh, they were meeting with world renowned leaders, with leaders who are basically Nobel Peace Prize winners in their field, who were talking to our kids and mentoring our kids about the opportunities that exist in the world. So when we took our kids and, and, and put them to this program, when we came back, we would do weekly breakdown sessions. And with that in mind, uh, we were able to come up with some ideas of how to take this leadership and then later on foster other areas of, of, of growth that we can bring to our campus. And, and that will, of course, I can present later about. Uh, I, I know we're limited in time. But with that in mind, I was really excited because as you all know, uh, when, when Dr. King reached out to me, he was very recognized, he was really recognizing the fact that we at one point had the most students attending Ivy Leagues from any public school in the country. And I, I was working in that program in the 90s and early 2000s, early on with Frank Lohadlin. And when he left, I, I kept the program going for a few years. And so he recognized that and he recognized that we have that type of student in our school. So with that in mind, uh, I, I want to recognize our students who participated in this program and when you hear what they do, you're going to be beyond impressed why when we put our kids and pit our kids against any kid across the country, across, across the globe, this is why they stand out and get selected. Uh, I'd like to recognize our students. I don't know if we can highlight them or not. I'm going to begin with uh, Angelina Rodriguez. You can wave Angelina so everybody knows who you are. Angelina is uh, one of our part of our mariachi program at Ed Cachosa. She's also in the powerlifting team, so she's got a national and state title. She does UIL writing. She just competed today, and she's a member of our speech program. So take a bow, Angelina. Uh, we also present to you Thomas Hernandez. Uh, Thomas Hernandez is also one of our key members of our mariachi program. Uh, he is also a member of our UIL academic team, competed today uh, in ready writing, and he's also a member of our speech team. Uh, take, go ahead and take a bow, Thomas. Well-deserved bow there. Uh, also, Matthew Rios. I, I, I know he's here as well. Matthew Rios, many of you all know him. He does all that magic on the basketball court, but he's also a member of the DECA program and also one of the outstanding students, uh, just academically well-rounded. I uh, also want to introduce to you Alia Cerda. Alia is one of our DECA students. Hey, Alia. 
she's uh, also qualified to the Student Congress Congressional Debate Meet this year, but due to the pandemic was unable to attend the meet because it was performed live in uh, uh, very far upstate, so we couldn't travel. Uh, she's also a member of the soccer team, our volleyball team, and our human services club. Uh, Aliyah, take a bow. Thank you. Next, we have Vicente Ruiz. Uh, Vicente is uh, one of our UL competitors. He does debate. Uh, he does a, a speech. He does DECA. He's uh, one of our computer whizzes. Uh, he is right now, he's also uh, one of our, our, our leaders in the stock market club. You want stock picks? Talk to this kid. He calls me and tells me, hey, Mr. Hassel, you should invest in this. Thank you, sir. 200% on that Atari stock. Um, uh, so Vicente, uh, amazing kid. Um, he is a boy, he's right now a senior. He's waiting, we're waiting on word from Baylor. Uh, he's applying to the medical programs. He's trying to get into the medical programs fresh out of high school to go straight to it for, for a doctoral degree. Um, our next student, I'll take a bow, Vicente. I'll take a bow, Vicente. Uh, our next student is Sasha Rivera. Sasha Rivera. Where are you, Sasha? There you are. Sasha is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes president. She's highly involved with her church. With her church, she is the captain of the speech team. She is a debater. She, folks, we've had amazing debaters throughout the history of our school. She is the first freshman in the history of Ed Couch also to qualify to the state tournament. Wow. Freshman, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, COVID last year derailed her from the opportunity to win a state title. But for a freshman to qualify is is almost it is very it's very rare. So we're very proud of her. And by the way, she did debate today and we got first and second, but just in case I didn't know today, we district and we got first and second. Good job. Thank you. And, and we didn't debate it out. We just, we just said, we got first and second. We don't need to debate. We're going to go take over at regional. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, so Sasha, no, no need to brag anymore. <laughs> I, I know. You know it's, it's, <laughs> That's uh, our, good. <laughs> Thank you. Our next student is Michael Flores. Where's Michael? Michael, also one of our awesome debaters, the other debater who, who tied uh, for first today. Uh, he's actually got best actor last week at the District UIL One Act Play. Uh, he's placed at several state meets. When we were at the tournament in, in, in Houston, let me just give you a little bragging right, Fred Couchelsa. We were the only public school in the quarterfinals. We were the only Title I school even in the, at that point, it was all private, 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 only Hispanic, only Title I school kid in that round. That speaks volumes when you're competing at a national level. And we finally lost to, to, he, finally awesome. lost to Peach, he finally lost to Peachtree High School, which is one of the top five programs. A lot of the ESPN analysts come from Peachtree High School. Check it out. And we lost, we lost that close round in a split decision, but i so proud of Michael. Michael, right now, he's also... Uh, president of the Stock Market Club. Michael is right now debating because he got to talk about a debate captain, right? He's gotten into UTSA. He's got it into Texas A&M. They're both fighting for him. So we're just watching back to see who gives him the most love in terms of money. So congratulations, Michael, to, you know, for all, all that hard work that he's done and representing Ed Cachosa uh, at the highest level. So, so this is why the Mentor Institute, when they saw these names, beyond impressed. Take a bow, Michael. You should... Y'all, we didn't get to see him on the stage, so we should do it. Gig him. <laughs> I think we got some opinion to do about which which choice he should take. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, our next student, our next student uh, needs no introduction. Uh, he's come up here before. Uh, Ernesto Moreno. Uh, where is he? There you go. Uh, Ernesto. Yes. Thank you, Ernesto. Ernesto is our math genius. He's going to go up tomorrow to compete uh, to see if he can back, get back to the state tournament. He's been to the state tournament every year since his freshman year. He is a math wizard. He's one of the top four, top 10 students in mathematics last year. Sadly, uh, COVID derailed his possibility of winning the state title. Folks, when you get to the state championship in 5A, that means that, that they're out of the, the 14, 1,500 students in the varsity level that started off, you're the cream of the crop when you're there, which is, which is no mistake why Princeton University said you're Princeton material. So Ernesto oh, will wow, be attending wow. Princeton University in the fall. Uh, so we were so proud of him for that. And, uh, and uh, 
when I when Matora called me, they said we love Ernesto. I mean, look, look at this, you know, migrant farm worker and 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 top notch at everything that he does. These are the game changers of the world tomorrow. All these kids that are here today are the game changers of the world tomorrow, and we're so proud of them. Um, so. In, in, in light of that, I do want to thank all their parents because we work closely with the parents because uh, I know there was always like, so we let our kids do this because, you know, the, the, when we're introducing this idea, it's the idea of can we or should we do this because our kids are going to be doing this online? How much is it going to take? Is it legitimate? Of course, is always the big question. And so when they got their certificates from Columbia University, I think that's pretty legitimate. So congratulations to them. And, and obviously, the parents, thank you so much to the parents. And one last person I wanna thank, I don't know if she's here, uh, Samantha Rodriguez, she's a teacher uh, who helps me a lot with, with a lot of the projects that we do. Uh, last year, I know we were gonna recognize Samantha. I know I talked to Ms. Rocha, but COVID of course hit. Samantha was actually a Fulbright student. She went and taught in South Korea and then decided to come back to Ed Calchosa. You know every school's after her when you teach uh, abroad like that and get accepted to such a highly prestigious program. So. And, and, and I wrote her recommendation and I was like, Sam, you can't leave us, but she came back. So her heart is at Cap Chelsea because there were other schools after her. So thank you so much, Samantha, for all the hard work that you did. So I tried to keep it as short as possible, folks, but this program is huge. What the kids are doing is amazing. The times are saying that, that you know, students are falling behind. The times are saying that students can't achieve. What these students have shown is that they can take a negative situation, flip it around, and do something positive. When they're having conversations with kids from China, from Brazil, from all across the country, and they're exchanging ideas about what leadership truly means, being led by Nobel Peace Prize winners, I think that's a great thing that we're doing. And to do it for six weeks is amazing. So thank you all so much, uh, uh, Board of Trustees, for your time. We thank you so much for letting us uh, brag about our kids. And uh, I wanna thank you all for the continuous support of these academic endeavors that our students are taking. And uh, thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for that, that kind introduction to our program. Mr. Hazel. Yes. Did you get everybody? I believe I did. Did I leave anybody out? I, I believe you did. Did I leave out Sasha? Uh, Victoria. Hi, Victoria. sir. Hey, Victoria, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Folks, let me introduce Victoria Hernandez. I saved the best for last. All right. Uh, Victoria Hernandez. Uh, I'm sorry, Victoria. Uh, I didn't see her. There she is. Okay. Victoria Hernandez. Uh, Victoria, first of all, uh, I apologize and, and to the parents as well. Uh, Victoria is one of our outstanding students. She was also one of our state qualified mock trial students this year. Uh, unfortunately, once again, she was unable to travel uh, because of, of COVID. She did qualify also her freshman year where she competed at the state tournament in Austin, Texas. Uh, the kids competed at the Texas Capitol, uh, actually presenting bills and then fighting those bills on the floor as if they were represent, uh, elected members of, of the United States, or not the United States, but the Texas legislature. Uh, she's also uh, a member of the UIL social studies team and the UIL writing team. So we're very proud of Victoria and all the work that she's doing. And uh, so thank you so much, Victoria. Take a bow. Congratulations to all y'all. We're all proud of y'all and above y'all. Above that, y'all should be proud of yourselves because y'all are putting in the work and y'all the ones doing the study and you're the ones that are preparing the night before. And um, of course, I'm sure your parents are pr proud of you, but you need to be proud of yourselves because y'all are the ones doing this. And of course, I always thank Mr. Hustle because uh, he's, he's a great uh, educator here at the district and he never fails to, to amaze me with the great things he does here at the school district. So thank you, thank you, thank all y'all. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Schmalzried for, for that, those kind words. Uh, in case y'all didn't know, Mr. Schmalzried was my student once, uh, certainly had a blast when he was in my class. I always, always enjoyed his, his presence there. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, I'd, I'd also like to thank uh, well, Mr. Hassel administration, uh, the parents, uh, all the, all you students. I mean, I know uh, every time we talk about news today, we get a lot of dark, you know, news, and there's a lot of, but there's a lot of great things and good things going on in our world today too, and in, in our district. Uh, I just I, I would really uh, like for us to 
to be promoting more of these good things that are happening to our students and to our community. Uh, with that being said, I'd, I'd like to kind of, I guess, put Dr. Rodriguez on the spot here and see if we can get a full page ad for these students uh, out on the monitor on a Sunday, uh, because I think it's, it, it, these are the highlights and the achievements that, you know, we need to, we need to let the Valley and the community know what's going on here at the Cal Chelsea. Uh, these are the best and the brightest stars we have. And uh, again, guys, congratulations, uh, Mr. Hustle, your staff and everyone at the high school. Uh, again, thank you all very much for, for really, you know, getting our students out there and in front of uh, some of these wonderful business leaders uh, that we have. So again, thank you all very much for everything you've done. Uh, and again, we're very proud of y'all here at the Capsule Size D. All right, thank you guys. Thank you everybody and congratulations for your success. Uh, we wanna thank all the teachers because I know that uh, this is a, a building block type of setup where it starts off in your early years. And uh, I know that many of you are, you know, getting ready to venture off into your college and uh, future endeavors. And this is just a stepping stone. And I know that uh, our teachers are, are very proud. Those teachers that are listening in right now, I'm pretty sure your principals from your elementary, your early childhood, they're all smiling right now. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that is something that everybody is proud of. So just know that you you put a smile on our faces today, all of you, for your achievements and all your success. Keep up the good work, all right? And teachers and staff, just know that this is products that are coming out of Ed Cachosa. We, we are very proud of that. So thank you, everybody, for the work that you do. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Hassel, and, and thank you, students. Uh, you inspire me at the end of a long day and you remind me of why I'm here to do what I do for students because at the end of it all, um, you can always hold your head up high knowing you're from Ed Cachasa and, and, and please always um, never forget where you're from and always go out and share that with the world because you all are doing amazing things and Mr. Also, thank you for helping lead them uh, in, in that direction. And I see nothing but great things uh, we heard this week that uh, Ed Cachelsa has a member on the Biden administration, uh, graduate of Ed Cachelsa, uh, Nayel, uh, and, and uh, I, 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 Santa Peralta, I believe, or Santa Peralta. Um, but th th that's just one example of, of where you all are headed. You're headed for bigger and better things, and I, I'm really excited about the future. Um, with that, uh, we, we want to also recognize additional staff in our district, uh, and, and I would like Ms. Rocha to help us in, in celebrating our diagnosticians and LSSPs, uh, because they also provide support to our students, as, as, as our teachers do and our administrators do. So with that, Ms. Rocha, will you uh, please lead us in recognizing them? Yes, of course. And I apologize earlier for the prayer. <laughs> My uh, computer wasn't working with the sound, but it, uh, Dr. Rodriguez and our Board of Trustees, it's truly an honor to honor tonight our diagnostician LSP uh, for their dedication and commitment to our students. Our special ed program is very unique. It uh, helps our students in, in so many different ways. So tonight it's truly an honor to uh, recognize them. And we're only sorry that we cannot have them here present, but we've got a PowerPoint for with our, our, our beautiful people there, okay? So we'll start. Uh, the first person that we would like to recognize is Ruby Winton Hill, and as well as Sheila Alfaro. They went and took their pictures. They're all wearing their nice shirts that uh, compliments of Ed Calchelsa ISD. So they were very uh, excited about their shirts. So uh, again, we wanna thank them as well as uh, Oscar Leal, and he's the only male and diagnostician, so we, we commend him for uh, doing this, as well as Angela Bill Ups. So again, I had the privilege of meeting with them and it was so exciting to see how, ex how they're just so passionate and, and wanting to help our students. Uh, so thanks to them as well, as well as uh, Viviana uh, uh, Sauceda. We wanna thank them as well as Debra Davila for their amazing work with our students on a uh, daily basis. And, and uh, not able to take a picture was Marlena Garza, but she, she was also, I got to talk to her. She was very excited. And I just wanna say that they're really truly appreciative to Dr. Rodriguez and our board of trustees for taking time to honor them this way. And then we also wanna honor our 
uh, LSP, like Dr. Rodriguez said, and uh, Veronica Gonzalez and Jennifer Ro Rodriguez, they were not able to take a picture, but we, also, we still want to honor and recognize them. We also want to thank Itza Flores and Virgil Gonzalez, as well as all the staff there at uh, our special ed department for the great work that they do on a daily basis. So again, uh, uh, congratulations for their great work. So this month was diagnostician and LSPP uh, uh, personnel. So we salute them for their great work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Varcha. Great job, guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all your hard work, staff. Um, we cannot neglect to recognize this next group of folks. Uh, we would like to recognize and honor our technology department. Uh, they were last March, around March 13th, they were thrown um, headfirst into a very difficult task and and uh, something that, that we did not imagine would have to happen. And that's getting a device in every student's hand, getting hotspots uh, to families that needed them and providing uh, support and, and technical support to all of our district in, the, in a very dire time when we needed to move quickly to remote learning. So um, it would be remiss of me not to uh, honor and recognize the technology department today for their hard work and everything that they've done for our district. So Ms. Rocha, would you please uh, recognize the individual team members? Yes, of course. And uh, again, like Dr. Rodriguez said, these people are so committed. They're always, you can always see them all over the district uh, fixing computers. They're always willing to come over and, and help anybody. So also they're, they're during anything that we do in our football stadium, the billboard, they're always so willing to work even after hours. So thank you. Uh, we we want to start with our director for the technology program, Jose L. Torres. So we want to thank him for a great job. Yes, a great job that he does with that department. Uh, also, uh, we want to recognize and honor Juan Edichete and Joe Vallejo for their amazing work in our district as well. Good job, guys. Thank you. And then we have Jorge Flores and Manny Silva. We also want to take time to salute them for their great work that they do every day. And then we have uh, Eric Nino, who was not that long ago, it seems that he was a student here in our district, and Arturo Ibarra. So again, we want to honor them and thank them for their great job that they do on a daily basis. And then we have Carlos Salinas and Tony Suniga. We also want to thank them for their amazing work and always saying yes to everything that we ask them to help us in our district. And then we also want to take time to honor Denise Montalvo, who's our, the secretary for this department, and also the lady that keeps our te technology building clean and safe for everybody, Ms. Celia Alvarado. And not able to take a picture, but we still want to recognize and honor Juan Diaz. Again, we want to thank them and recognize them and, and uh, for this great, great uh, uh, work that they do every single day. Thank you so much. Hey, great job, technology department. Y'all have been doing an excellent job here. Um, I know the parents, they've, they've been happy. They call, they get a quick response if they're having problems mm -hmm. with their laptops. And just everything with, with the pandemic. Th this past summer was rough for us. And we didn't know what we were going to do with the hotspots and the laptops. But uh, y'all's quick thinking and... Um, ordering and purchasing the hotspots before other districts in the state and the nation started doing it. Uh, Y'all uh, arose to the, uh, to the situation and, and bought those before they sold out and gave Ed Couch us a head start. And uh, just thank you all for everything y'all have been doing here for our school district. And I just, I wanted to make sure y'all get recognized and, and all of us uh, here at the, at the board of trustees wanted to make sure that y'all got recognized. I think this is the first time that yes. we've had uh, technology uh, the department recognition and yes. uh and myself along with the board trustees have gotten together and, and we talked about it and uh we need to include you all in the annual recognition because the work that you all do for our our district and our and our students is is uh, shouldn't go unnoticed yes thank you thank you
Yes, President Morales and members of the board. Um, I also would like to add that Mrs. Rocha uh, got the technology department a, a nice token of appreciation. She got mm -hmm. them a, a personalized pen that they, they can- Black uh, and gold. Black and gold, of course. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> let me share my screen. You didn't get them a black and gold uh, mouse or keyboard? <laughs> it was, it was no, no, no technology. <laughs> yeah, take it, I gotta stick with the technology. You know, my... <laughs> can everyone see my my screen? Yes. Okay. So tonight, board, I would like to present to you uh, an update on some enrollment that uh, the district uh, currently is experiencing, and then some strategies for how we can increase that enrollment. So uh, I, I want to give you this uh, data based on one enrollment, two average daily attendance, and then finally the percent of attendance uh, as, as, as the data show, all three have declined for our district over the past year. Enrollment of our students is down 427 students. Our ADA has decreased to 453.47, and our percent of attendance has gone down at 2.52% uh, uh, attendance of enrollment. So what I want to do is also put in front of you uh, the increase and decreases that you can see by campus in front of you on your screen. So if you look at the enrollment column, you'll see at the high school, uh, we've decreased 36 students in enrollment, the academy two. Uh, one bright spot is that the junior high and the Ibarra Fine Arts Academy have increased attendance over the past year. Uh, both campuses and then um, you'll note that our biggest decrease uh, has been at the JRG pre-K and that is a trend that we see statewide and that we continue to see uh, uh, because of course these are our most vulnerable students our youngest students and we are in the middle of a pandemic and then you see the total district um, for, for uh, decline there of 427. Then under the average daily attendance, you'll notice a drop uh, at the high school from down 118, um, an increase at the academy of one, and then uh, the Battle Fine Arts also shows a slight increase. Uh, District-wide, again, we are down 453.47, and then our percent of attendance, as you can see, uh, every campus has a breakdown there, but uh, district-wide, we're at negative 2.52. Next, I would like to share with you the, per, the numbers of students that are on campus. Uh, you'll notice on, on the, it's broken down by grade level, by campus. The academy, for example, has six total students in person on campus attendance, and there's a breakdown there by grade level. And then you'll notice the breakdown at Tuan with 95 students total uh, between grades seven and eight. Ibarra um, Fine Arts Academy at 55 students. And then the high school, uh, at 22 to 18, uh, you'll notice the number of uh, seniors is is a little lower than uh, maybe the 10th graders or the, the freshmen. Uh, so that is something that we want to make sure that we keep an eye on them because as, as you know, graduation is, is coming up and we want to uh, ensure that our students are ready for that. You can also see by uh, elementary school, the total number of students, so JFK, uh, has 127 students. Uh, JRG in the pre-K-3 and the pre-K-4 has around 73. We also know that there are a few students in the Head Start program that are not accounted for on this list that would increase that number to approximately 85, I believe. Uh, LBJ is at 145. That's our highest in-person enrollment. Then RCR is at 103 and Garcia Elementary at 126. That puts us to at about 823 students that are attending on campus instruction. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, when we look at all this data, because I'm going to present a little bit more data, something known as the iceberg effect. You know, a lot of times uh, we only see the tip of the iceberg. We only see that we have that surface knowledge. We, we see what's right immediately around us. But what we sometimes don't see is that deeper knowledge, you know, what lies beneath the surface. So kind of my presentation and the purpose of my update tonight is to talk a little bit about what's that below the surface? What can we do about that? And what's the plan to address that? So I, I want to share this region one data and it, and it looks very busy on the screen, but one thing I, I want you to notice is the far right column under the total. 
and you'll see a breakdown by district or charter and you'll notice a, a pattern here. If uh, I'll give you a minute to look at that. And parentheses is a decrease, that, that's correct. That's a negative uh, difference. So anytime you see a parentheses, that means that that's how many students in one, uh, from 1920 to 2021, that district has either uh, lost students or gained students. And if you can look at that far right column, you'll notice that when you see a positive gain, uh, you'll see the idea of public schools in region one has picked up about 12,678 students. Uh, and you'll notice that Vanguard Academy has picked up 433 students and that South Texas A ISD has picked up six students and that Lyford is the only uh, district who did not lose students, but remained at zero. Uh, the Montessori public schools went up to 120. And then on the next slide, you'll see that Triumph Public Schools in Laredo uh, went out to, uh, to uh, went up to 229. And La Sara ISD uh, is the one district here along with Webb that has an increase of students. Uh, but you'll notice that traditional ISDs are struggling to, to keep their students uh, while charters and, and non-traditional ISDs have been gaining uh, uh, students uh, most districts have been losing students throughout. The, so that's part of the under the, the water um, data that I want to show you. Uh, so if we look at how many students have left at Couch Elsa and, and which district they went to, you can see uh, over the 1920 to 2021 school year that IDEA gained approximately 111 of our students. Westaco ISD picked up around 46, Edinburgh 28. Donna 14 and then the rest, as you can see there, um, is, is for the breakout of where our students went. So that that's that's one piece of data. The the next one I want to show you is oh yes sir. The the, the next piece uh, I want to show you uh, is that it's not all bad news. I mean we we actually do gain new students in our district from sending districts. Uh, we picked up 44 students from Westaco. 15 from Edinburgh, and we actually brought back 13 students from IDEA. So that's the silver lining. We know that that our students will and can come back to us, and that's that's kind of the strategy that I want to focus on. And you'll see far uh, San Juan Alamos uh, have have about 10 students coming our way, and then a further breakdown. Uh, Mr. Lasana, I believe you had a question. Well, not necessarily a question, but more more of a comment. Uh, I know in the past we had discussed this as far as losing students, I, I know a, a bulk of them are going to Edinburgh and to Westlaco, uh, but some of this, a lot of it had to do with after school programs, you know, the, can y'all hear me now? Uh, yeah, or, or the lack thereof after school yeah. programs here at the district, you know, so we, we had a lot of parents uh, that was, it was very difficult for them to come and pick up their students at 315 when Westlaco ISD or Edinburgh ISD right next door uh, was keeping their kids till about 5, 5.30 because of after, after school programs. So that, I mean, I, I don't know if that's in your presentation. I hate to like bar barge in in the middle of it, but I think that's something that we really need to, we really need to look at. Actually, um, it's not, uh, yes. am I on? Yes. Okay. It's not lost in the, in the presentation, but it is something that uh, Mrs. Rutsch and I have been working. Uh, we, we've been working with a grant writer to try to bring the 21st century grant to our district to provide after school programming, because yes, I do see that there is a need to provide that after school support. Uh, should we not get that grant, uh, I would still uh, pursue uh, dollars based on stimulus funding and, and other revenue streams to, to help provide those after school supports so that more parents will be inclined to, to bring students uh, into the district and not worry about after school child care. Uh, if you look at the five-year uh, fall enrollment by campus, you can also see starting in 1617 all the way to 2021, the decrease by campus. Uh, and, and you can, uh, throughout, of course, and, and Ibarra are a little bit unique because, you, as you know, the grades shifted. And so um, we'll see a, an increase at, at Ibarra in, at the end of the school year once the reporting gets done. But um, if you look at the, the numbers at the very bottom in bold, since 1617, we've gone from 5,320 enrolled in the fall to this last fall uh, of 4,538. So that is a substantial number of students lost over time over a five-year period. 
Um, one other piece of data I wanted to share with you as far as what that means, um, you know, when we start to talk about attracting students to our district and, and making sure families uh, choose us first, we, we want to look at our supports and, and you're, you're right along the, the, the line there, Mr. Osano, talking about after school care and, and how we care for our students when they're here. So oh, I, I did want to point out uh, this data here, which is very, it's a very busy chart. So I'll just go right to the graphic. So the graphic uh, talks about staffing ratios. So if you look at the blue line, uh, starting in 12, 13, all the way till 2021, the blue line is our enrollment. And then if you look at the red line, that is our non-teacher staff. So you'll notice that as our enrollment decreased, our non-teacher staff increased and our teacher staff followed as it should uh, the, the enrollment of students, you know, fewer students, then fewer teachers are required. And so um, I just, I wanted to share this piece of data because uh, we are at the same time as, as enrollment is declining, we are increasing some positions that are uh, not uh, teacher specific, but are non-teacher positions in the district. So what that means is that, you know, we, I, I've just shown you the bottom of the iceberg and that means that, that of course the next step is to plan for how we recover those students. Recovery being recovery from the pandemic and recovery being recovery uh, from uh, students leaving at Cal Chelsea. And as we heard from our teacher and nine, our students, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be proud for, of our district and a lot of reasons why students uh, are thriving in our district, but there, we still have a ways to go. And the way that we do that, of course, is we, we work as a, as, a, as a board and as a district to create that long range plan with specific strategic priorities. Um, I I, as I mentioned in my 90 day plan update, uh, my next step is to uh, start that strategic planning process using community wide input, um, helping create those priorities that help set the direction for the district and creating that district wide culture of student achievement and excellence uh, that, that our students demonstrated tonight. Um, what the strategic pro planning process would look like is it would help inspire us to drive a change uh, based on our beliefs and our values. And then it would help put that view out for long-term success for the district. Because of course, um, everyone wants to be part of a winning team. Just so you know, we have state champions in powerlifting. We have state champion mariachis. We have um, all kinds of state champions in our district. And we also have uh, students who are excelling academically in UIL, when I play and, and other uh, events. So we need to highlight those and we need to make sure that, that we continue that environment in our district. Um, this plan that we develop, of course, by bringing in the community will be a transparent process. Uh, it'll help people get ownership of the process. And then we will engage those, those diverse stakeholder groups throughout this process. Then we'll be able to follow that vision and belief and goals to actual actions and outcomes and, and track that as we move forward. Uh, that will give us that roadmap to develop those support systems, that after school programming, that, um, that, that wraparound support for students who, who may be struggling. And we align that based on the district needs. And of course, all that's framed around those measurable outcomes. We discussed setting goals for HB3 as, as a board, and then those metrics we can easily monitor for, for progress, as well as additional things like how students feel about school and how staff feels about the, the, the district and how they uh, are thriving and, and the culture that they're in. Uh, Dr. Elias. Yes, sir. Real quick, again, going back to what I had said, mentioned earlier, and I think that that that's huge in this piece uh, you just mentioned. I think we need to, we as, and I say we as a district, need to do a better job of promoting our academic achievements. Uh, like like these students have just got the certificate from Columbia. There's something we really need to put it out there so that the community can see that academic achievements are also being one here at Cal Chelsea. Uh, you know, a lot of times it gets lost in translation with the athletic department, but these students and the achievements that they've made through the UIL process as well, uh, it, it's, it's huge feats that we've, we've had. And I think it's, it'd be who of us to really, really uh, push those programs and, and highlight those programs. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. I mean, all, all of our students' achievements are, are amazing and important, and, and we do have those, those those superstars that we need to continue to highlight in our district. Um, 
when we go through strategic planning process, uh, you know, we've got to set some priorities. And these are just examples. I, I, I'm not coming with the solutions. I'm coming with uh, where we can move. But uh, we have early childhood, which is something that, that's really important with Head Start and with Pre-K-3, Pre-K-4. Um, once we start them strong and we have a strong foundation, more than likely the students will stay with us because they, they'll, they'll feel supported and they'll feel the families will feel that we, of course, uh, value them in, in our school district. And then the academic achievements, you know, making sure we monitor those HP3 goals and that we hold ourselves accountable to those goals. And of course, always highlighting our extracurricular programs because a, a lot of the pride and tradition of our district is, is based in the extracurricular. Uh, so we want to do not one or the other, we want to do them both. We want to do strong academics and strong extracurriculars. Uh, our career and technical education program is one that uh, is strong and can get, get even stronger. Uh, we've set out some CCMR goals in our HB3, and I, I believe that CTE is one pathway that'll help us get there. Our college and career readiness. I mean, early college is one program that we have that, that uh, some of the, the charter schools don't have. Uh, if our students can leave us with an associate's degree, that's something we need to continue to promote and push and, and make sure that uh, the parents know that uh, Students can leave us with, their children can leave us with two years of college or an associate's degree uh, that sets them on, on the path for that post-secondary uh, degree. And of course, our dual enrollment program, uh, if it's not early college, we support dual enrollment as well. So uh, one thing that we, we really haven't talked about, but I've noticed is a, is a need in the district is, is taking care of the whole child. That's that social emotional learning component. Um, I, I'm reviewing currently something uh, known as a, a stakeholder survey where students would get these um, these 15, 10 to 15 minute surveys where they could talk about um, whether they have opportunities to demonstrate how smart they are in class, whether they have, whether they feel safe at school, uh, all of those, those non-tangible -ta things about how students feel in school and their experience. Uh, this would help identify through a, a a survey system and then through specific dashboards for every student, uh, whether or not they need support in academics, attendance and behavior in that those social uh, emotional learning things that, that I've just discussed. Uh, and, and this particular um, solution that I'm looking at would also not only um, identify students who may be struggling, but it would also help build the competencies of those students like um, for instance, growth mindset, you know, do, do students demonstrate growth mindset and if not, um, what can we do to bolster that so that they they persist and they feel co uh, confident in school? Uh, and then there's lessons attached to that. And this will be a, a big help, uh, not only for our counselors, but for our teachers and our administrators to make sure that we're addressing the, the entire child and taking care of the whole child. Uh, so we do the extracurricular, we do the academics, but what about uh, particularly now during the pandemic, how students are experiencing school, if they're remote, you know, they're not having a connection every day with their classmates uh, in person, then uh, what are we doing about it and how are we helping them out? And this would help create those outward facing dashboards that we could say, look, at Ecau Chelsea, 95% of our students uh, feel safe. 96% uh, of our students uh, feel like someone care, an adult in the building cares about them. And we could put that on our website so that if people are shopping around, they'll know what our students actually experience at our schools. And then so um, some immediate and short-term thing, that, that was long range, that's kind of where, where I envisioned the district going, but some things I can do now and we can do as a team is create what I call an inbound marketing strategy. Uh, a lot of what we've been doing is, called, is known as push out marketing, you know, um, putting out messages, making commercials, putting up billboards, but there's also the strategy known as, as uh, inbound, where you pull in families based on reaching out to them specifically about what they're interested in. A lot of times we know that uh, sometimes some charter schools sell the idea of college for all, or they sell the idea that uh, if you go with them, that the academics are going to be top notch. I believe we can do the same thing in our district by, by specifically uh, marketing those uh, specific families uh, and, and letting them know what it is here in Ed so that we do. Uh, we can have uh, specific features and articles on our, our on our website that I'm about to talk about, uh, and of course social media campaigns on on our, our social media uh, platforms, and then uh, we need to make sure we search engine optimize our website, and that's a, a service we can pay for. So that if anybody Google's schools in the valley, that it Chelsea is one of the top schools that comes out. Uh, 
we have some great videos produced. Uh, they're sometimes hard to find. So I would also say that as we produce videos that we need a, a place to actually sh showcase and highlight them. And then we can, uh, we have a lot of expert teachers and administrators in our district that could be hosting uh, web-based seminars to let people know about the great things we're doing in our district and highlight the, the work that they're doing. So uh, one of the, the items on the agenda tonight is about our website. Our website is in need of a redesign. Uh, it needs to be mobile device friendly. It needs to have push notifications so that if something comes out, it goes directly to the, the person's smartphone. It needs, uh, it needs to have a platform where social media integrates. In other words, if one of our administrators posts to Twitter, it gets posted to Facebook, it gets posted to Instagram, and it goes to the website all, in, all with one push of a button. Uh, it needs to have alerts uh, whenever we send out important information. It needs to have a web app so that, the, that uh, as we use our smartphones, we can access information quickly and easily. And then we need to make sure that we register our website on local Google. So uh, Mr. Torres and his team, uh, uh, Mr. Torres and myself actually sat down with some web design companies and we have found a solution with uh, one who can provide us with all of these uh, different components of the website redesign. So bringing back our students, um, as you saw, we, we recovered some idea students uh, that had left us. Uh, we want to make sure we're requesting the same student director information that they request of us and that we market directly to those families with direct mailers that are personalized with their names and that we give the specific information for their grade level so that they understand that we care about them and we know who they are and we want them back. Uh, so that's another strategy that I would uh, put out there. Uh, maximizing our video on our website, having that gallery like I talked about. Uh, Mr. Morales and several of you have recommended uh, that COVID safety protocols video. That's one that uh, Ms. Rocha is leading the production on to make sure that we get that uh, produced. Uh, we want to make sure that on this new, uh, website that we can post video directly from our mobile devices. So let's say Friday we're at the soccer game uh, where our girls are taking on McAllen on Friday. Uh, if, if an administrator is there and starts shooting a video, they can post 30 seconds of that to go straight to our website uh, so people can see the great things that our students are doing again, and, and it can happen anywhere. Uh, I would also propose a student video contest. Our students are very talented. I'd love for them to showcase why they love Ed Kachelsa and create a contest and give them a reward for that, and then um, feature their videos on our website. And then, uh, you know, hearing about all these great alumni for our district, uh, board members here included, I mean, you all are, are very successful people in the community. Uh, uh, where are they now? Uh, spotlight video feature, you know, interviewing you for 30 seconds, interviewing those people, letting them know, um, this is what I do now for a living. I work for at the at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and this is what I do daily. And, and just spotlight it so students know that you start here, you can go anywhere. Uh, and that's kind of one of the, the things I want to highlight in our videos. Uh, I think you're muted. Are you muted? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I, I I brought up also was that right now the times that have changed, uh, everyone is sitting pretty much behind a computer have access to some type of uh, media video conferencing uh, this would be an ideal time for our teachers to invite you know uh, yes, speakers speakers yeah. and uh, it's just finding them you know individuals that have graduated from our district and that way it, it'll entice our uh, students here in the community a lot of it is what exposure our students have as to the goals that they set and uh, if we don't open the world to them, then they only see whatever is within the realm of what they, they've been exposed to. So I know having uh, all these individuals that we've spoken about that we've had come and present during our meetings, those are, and then it doesn't have to have any type of age group, even a senior talking to some of our, you know, first graders, second graders, they can show how people that are in the debate team, people that are in UIL. Like ambassadors. Yes, ambassadors for our district. And that is something that, you know, right now computers are at the reach of every one of our students. And it's just a moment of, you know, timing it to where our students can connect and, uh, you know, it, it showcase, showcase what, what the students are working and doing and all their success. And it also works as a self remedy to where you feel good about what you're doing as an individual when you share things and you get to see how other people look up to you for things that you're doing, so. Uh, uh, Mr. Board President, uh, if I may, you know, I, I know 
the past couple of years, we've been talking about this, about marketing, about letting parents know what El Cachoso offers. Um, most of these things, other schools offer them. Associate's degree, graduate associate's degree, you know, um, the 95% going to college. But what's different from us, from them? That's what we need to highlight when we're putting these videos out. You know, why should parents choose us other than the neighboring school? You know, we could say all these things. Well, yeah, you, you offer these, but this school offers it too. We need to, to, to stand like a selling point to the parent why you're going to choose Ed Couch because we offer uh, opportunities for our students to go to Ivy Leagues. I didn't know we had students going to Princeton if I wouldn't have been in this board meeting. And I'm a parent. I know a, lot, we had a couple of years ago, we had one go to Colgate. You know, I think Mr. also mentioned no one going to uh, Columbia. But if you don't blast that out there, to let parents know, we send students to Ivy League schools, and that's been that's been the brand of Ed Couch since the '90s. And we need to stick to that brand. That's who we are. We we produce Ivy League students. That's why you're going to send your students to Ed Couch. Yeah. I I want what's best for my my children. You know, I could I could take my child into any of the school district, but I want what's best for them. And I know Ed Couch also produces Ivy League students. They well, they parents need to know that. And and I think I think most importantly too, uh, you know, Dr. Rodriguez in the mid administration. I, I think most importantly, just push the button. Keep on going. Okay. And they are getting free college, yeah. You know, so those are kind of little gimmicks. <laughs> and from gimmicks, it's actually pretty what it is. Yes. In, in comparison to some charter schools that, that say all the same, well, but yet we're offering free college for all. A junior. Imagine that being an 18 year old starting as a junior and be graduating from college in two years. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, and then I just, just to go on a little bit more, you know, a, a lot of our teachers have been dedicated to this district for a long time, and we need to make sure we're highlighting it and providing that positive uh, feedback that that we see on our POSIP uh, post checks. A lot of times they, they call out specific teachers and talk about um, how those teachers are, are doing a, a tremendous job with their students. Uh, so I think we can also use those kind of like the positive Yelp reviews that you would see uh, and highlight those on our website. And then I'm gonna click on this link here and hopefully it'll take us out. Uh, this is an idea that I saw that I, I thought was pretty amazing. Uh, it comes from a school called Lakewood Catholic Academy. But for instance, you know, it, we could highlight by campus our teachers and our staff, you know, our central office staff, our support staff, but you can click on them and just have a nice picture of the staff member, um, see what their, uh, their favorite book is, you know, what they like to do like and get to learn a little bit about the teacher because again, <laughs> uh, as Mr. Smallstreet was saying, you know, what makes us different and it's going to be that, that caring staff that's been here, uh, that's dedicated to our students. So I think a way to do that is to, is to create these highlight, you know, and, and make them nice quality pictures where, 
the staff member you know poses for them and, and we we do a great job of of highlighting who the who our teachers are at our schools because parents really care about the teachers that their children have and so i think the more we highlight them uh the better off we'll be uh as far as attracting parents because you know you never know what teacher you're going to get and and it's the teacher that makes the biggest difference in a child's life uh, and then doing a Teacher Tuesday post to social media, highlighting a specific teacher every Tuesday and about the work that they're doing and then and posting that because I think our people is also one of our assets and that's something that we need to promote and sell as a district. Um, then, of course, there's never there's always a traditional outreach. We need to continue with our TV and print ads, our billboards. Uh, we need to continue our registration drives, you know, pre-K registrations coming up very soon. Uh, we want to make sure that we're doing that in person. Uh, and that we're also using virtual in case people are hesitant to, to come in person. But when they do come in person, uh, Mrs. Rocha does an excellent job of making sure that uh, those students know we care about them, that we're giving them a T-shirt, that we're you know, giving them school supplies when they register. Uh, because, again, we want them to, to come to our district because this is a, a special place. And then, of course, we want to have specific school meetings at those transition grades. So if you're a fifth grader, you should know what Ibarra is going to look like and have those virtual meetings uh, so that parents know what it's going to be like in the sixth grade. Same thing for going to seventh, same thing for going to ninth grade, and having those transition grade school-wide meetings so that um, you demystify what, what it's going to be like to go into a new school. And then uh, all of this is to say that, you know, we need a we need a plan as a district. We need to set those strategic priorities. And I always use this uh, saying is that you want to plan for change, not perfection. And the, the pandemic's taught me that. Uh, it's driven it home. Uh, we, the, the strongest part about actually the strategic planning process is not the plan that you write and, and publish and put on the website, but it's the process that you go through. It's engaging everybody in this conversation about the strengths of our district and how we can get better and that continuous improvement. So um, with that board, I know that was a long update uh, and strategies for increasing our enrollment, but I, I believe that we're on the right path and that, um, you know, it, we didn't get into our, our decline overnight and it, it will get out of it. And I do see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Uh, so uh, we're gonna continue to push forward and, and continue with that strategic planning process. And then those immediate steps that I just outlined uh, for increasing our student enrollment. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions you may have. Yeah, yes, Doctor. I'd like you to return to the uh, slide, uh, the staffing patterns, if you would. Yes, sir. On the staffing patterns, you just missed it. I, I want to oh. correct something you stated, Doctor. No, okay. Uh, no, the other, the other uh, graph. Show the graph. Uh huh. You said that we're we're uh, increasing in our non uh, teacher. teacher position. Right. But I think what the graph is really telling us is that yes. Uh, right now, enrollment, we've lost students, which our data shows we have. And obviously, we've lost uh, our teacher and, and student ratio. Obviously, is probably where it really needs to be. But what we want to show in this graph is that since 2016, that when we're at our higher point as far as non-teacher staff, we've actually reduced somewhat, and we've been able to maintain it for the last couple of years. We haven't hired anybody. We've maintained the... Uh, the ratio of so, and this is important, I think, for everybody to understand is that yes. during a pandemic, during a, a moment of of crisis, we were able to keep everybody employed that are non-teacher. When it yes, would have been really easy to say, you know what, let's cut everything across the board. Right. Uh, we're in crisis mode, and I think this data here, and I want to make sure, you know, I just wanted to correct you on that because uh, I don't want them to think that we're increasing. No, we right. maintain the non-teacher staff yeah. going through this crisis. And our plan is to continue as we go forward uh, and do everything we can to keep the district afloat. So I just want to okay. thank, thank you, Mr. Torres. Can you hear me now? Uh, teachers have, have been leaving. They've been retiring because of the COVID. They've been um, resigning because of the fear of COVID. But since then, it's been the red has been stagnant. And we have to also understand that we need to keep our campuses clean. It hasn't gone up, but we can't get rid of anybody because we need to make sure that all the custodians and everybody are keeping our, our campuses safe and clean and getting everything ready so when we do come back in the fall that we're prepared. So... I know, I know the teachers has gone down slightly, 
but we haven't hired anybody. So the budget has been, been protected as well. And everything's been remote. So we've been able to put more, more students into a, a remote learning. And, um, and also I agree with Mr. Torres said, it's a misconception on, on your slide here. And uh, I don't agree with it. I, I, when I first saw you put it up, but it's, it is what, what, um, what Mr. Torres said as well and, and what I'm saying. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sponsor and Mr. Torres uh, for the clarification. Uh, I did not mean to insinuate that I was just showing that over time from 2012 through 2021, there had been an increase. Uh, and yes, you're, you're correct that uh, for the last uh, three years, it's been maintained. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 All right. So we uh, go ahead and finish with our our uh, superintendent's report. Now we have item six, our consent agenda items. We have uh, items A, B, all the way to items J. Do we have any questions on any? Uh, Mr. Items? President, I, I would um, advise or recommend that we pull item I so that we can have further consideration and consultation with our attorney. All right. Do I hear? Second. All right, so I've got a motion by Mr. Smaldrick to approve all the items except item I. Uh, a sec by Mr. Uh, Lozano. All those in favor? All those opposed? All right, so the motion passes. Sorry. Can you hear me With now? With the exception, yes. So, what, so when it's solid red, it's, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yes. I, I to get confused. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's go ahead and go all the way to uh, item number seven. We have discussion and action items. Uh, item A, we have discussion action to approve state of education relation regulations. School board trustees must select the board of directors of regional educational service centers. Each school trustee in the region receives one vote per vacancy on the board with the exception of South Texas ISD, which receives a total of seven ballots. Ballots listing uh, more than one vote per vacancy will be invalid. So we have our um, ballots on your tables. No, it's for you. Don't look at it. No, uh, the board may fill this out and uh, give it to, uh, to Dr. Rodriguez and we could submit it into uh, our. Right. Uh, no, it does. It, I mean, I would advise that we authorize, we approve that method that the board just fill this out. Each member fill this out on their own and then give it to the superintendent after. I, I, I'll i go ahead and make a motion to uh, go with that recommendation. Second. So, all right. So I've got a motion by Mr. Lozano to uh, allow the uh, board members to fill out their, their ballot. Uh, second by Mr. Torres. All those in favor? All those Aye. opposed? All right. Motion passes. Uh, item B, we've got discussion and possible action to approve waiver applications for the Texas Education Agency to waive the required instruction for seniors grade 12 in cardiopulmonary resuscitation. resuscitation as required by Texas Administrative Code 74.38 due to COVID-19. So moved. All right, so I've got a motion by Mr. Smallsery, second by Mr. Torres. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Item C, we've got uh, discussion action to approve contract with uh, website service provider. Well, what's, what's this? It's Mr. Torres. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Good yeah, afternoon, Mr. Torres. Uh, first of all, thank you for the recognition. Every member of our department is really thankful for that. Um, the our website services are actually coming to an end as far as our contract here in July in June sorry um, so we're we've gone out we've looked at multiple different website providers and I'm seeking approval to enter into contract with Aptigy for those services and um, this is uh, services that will keep the district in compliance with state and local federal website posting requirements it will provide the necessary communication tools for our parents and our teachers um, and it is a complete turnkey. So I'm going to redesign our website and all the stuff that he said. Yeah. 
So with the actual with the actual redesign uh, in the turnkey solution, everything that we currently have on our website we, would be moved over into a new website, um, and they would build a new app for us. And it also includes the communications. Currently, you know, when we have call outs to the parents, uh, we use a certain company to do that. This would incorporate it into the actual call out with the website, um, and it would go to the apps as well as to text messages and things of that nature. What's the price difference, Joe, from last year's contract? Or yes, sir. The, the no. difference between uh, the difference between the, the the pricing is currently when you go to a new provider, uh, they're going to charge you all the startup fees, and right. then after the first year, it goes back to um, you know it's comparable. I believe that the renewal is nineteen thousand dollars. Currently, we're paying about maybe fourteen, fourteen and a half thousand, um, and we have had some issues with this current website provider. We've been down a couple of times. <coughs> online uh, uh, classes. You know, we, we can't afford to be down as much. We, okay. in, discussion with, uh, I apologize. in discussion with Dr. Rodriguez, we would like to use the ESSER funding for the first year purchase uh, to cover the cost. And then, of course, next year would go back to more of a normal situation, what we currently have. It would be an increase of about $5,000. Okay. Now, y'all... Y'all vetted this company. Uh, I mean, did, did, I mean, y'all y'all are pretty comfortable with what we're getting. Uh, yeah, pretty. yes, sir. Um, this is a, a company who also provides services to uh, other districts here in the valley that uh, have those features that I had discussed previously about uh, push notifications and being able to publish to all social media platforms from one uh, cert, one specific place. Uh, and so, all those features that I talked about in the marketing and recruitment uh, portion are included in this new web platform that uh, Mr. Torres has brought to you tonight. Uh, and what about the mobile app? It, it would it would have a mobile app development. The name of the company is Aptigy, and uh, they they do create not just. Uh, one of the things that sets this company apart is that they don't just take a, a website and then create a, a mirror of it on, on, a, on an app to actually make it na a native app so that it acts and, and behaves like an app and not just a little website on a phone. So um, that's that's one of the reasons why we, after reviewing the, the other vendors, that we, we decided that this was a good solution. Uh, another thing is that uh, currently we do have uh, some federal funding who, uh, because of COVID, uh, that's allowing us to um, use this to communicate more effectively uh, during our, our COVID pandemic. And so those initial startup costs will come out of that fund so that uh, there's no impact to the unbudgeted amounts this year. Doug, are they local? No, they're not. They're not local. Is this the best that's out there? This is the best website that we were, that we reviewed. And I have I had experience with this company in the past as well. Okay. Well, if everybody's comfortable with it, I... Chris. No. All right. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, <clears throat> I know in the district we have websites per campuses, and I know that uh, we have webmasters that uh, kind of maintain our websites. Is this going to include, you know, training for these individuals? Yes, absolutely. In the pay? All right. Yeah. Do, do, do we have websites for each campus right now yes yes mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever gone to lbj <laughs> yeah they have one yeah i'm not sure uh yes, they all have they all have yeah. <clears throat> yeah and the beautiful thing about this this different company that, that we'd like to go with is that it makes things a lot easier to communicate with the parents. Right now, when we put something out, we put it on Facebook, then we put it on Twitter, then we put it on our website, then we put it on our, you know, and it's, with this one, it's a one deal. We get in there, we do what we have to do, and it throws it out to all the different sites in one shot. Um, as well as what Dr. Rodriguez was talking about earlier, that if they're out there somewhere at a game or at some type of old event, it's a quick videos, and those can be taken to all the different social media sites as well as our website quickly and efficiently. Well, well if y'all like it, I can make a motion to approve. Hold, hold on, I'd like to say something before you go on to the motion. There's apps that actually do that. That sounds very simple. That doesn't seem like something. I want to know if our website's going to be updated and, and, you know, we're still running off of the same website from like 10 years ago. Is it, is, are they going to be able to produce a new website? Are they oh, going to yeah, add, add the links onto this new website on the app? Am I going to be able to go to the app and, and click possibly? And it'll take me straight to the possum link in the, in the school district. I mean, will, it, will it be able to do all these things? I just want to make sure because 
I don't want to be worried about this next year. Well, I told you so, or, you know what, we've been through this before. I want to make sure it's best, especially if it's coming out of the COVID fund. It's not even coming out of our money. So it's not going to hurt us. So might as well get the best. Right. Right. So I, 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 you, you're confident to tell me right now it's the best and, and it's going to be better than Facebook apps and Twitter apps. And you're going to be able to do everything on there. Yeah, it is. It is top of the line, sir. It really is. There are companies out there that are much more expensive that are twice or three times so much the cost, but the services that these provide are just as good or better. Okay, I said your Mr. Losano's uh, motion. All right. So we've got a motion uh, to approve the contract with the website service provider. Uh, I've got a motion by Mr. Uh, Losano, a second by Mr. Smalls. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. All right. So item eight, we've got uh, closed session. The superintendent requests that the Board of Trustees convene in close meeting as authorized by the provisions of Open Acts Chapter 551 of Texas Code Government, Texas Government Code. This executive session is in accordance with 551071, 072, 073, 74, 076, 082, 083, and 084. The time is now 7.58 and we are now in closed session. Mr. Torres, are we going to be uh, going into uh, our... Uh,
Mountain uh, Executive Session. It is uh, 847. We have action items discussed in closed session. Uh, item one, item A, 551.74, discussion action regarding personnel, consideration, employment, employment, resignation, retirement, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of public office or employee. Dr. Rodriguez. I'd like to make a motion to approve as discussed in closed session. Second. So I've got a motion by Mr. Lostino, second by Mr. Torres. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. We've got item B, discussion. No action, Mr. Gordon. No action. All right, so I've got item 10, adjournment. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Lozano, second by Mr. Torres. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. All right. Thank guys. you, everybody. Y'all have a great and safe uh, week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Rocha. Good night, everybody. Good night.